Today I'm looking at the filament dryer from FixDry and why drying your filament is important. FixDry is a fairly new Chinese based company providing anything from dryers to filament. Full disclosure. FixDry provided the NT143 for me to test. However, I have no affiliation with the company, no money exchange hands and I can say my fully unbiased opinion. The links down below are not affiliated and my job today is to guide you into making an informed decision. The NT1 is a dual spool filament dryer with a built-in option to dry bigger spools. Unboxing it we could see that the way they protect the housing is actually pretty smart and space efficient. By surrounding it with some nice and thick foam and then putting it in what looks like an acrylic toplet, they shove it in the box and send it your way. As acrylic is more impact resistant to drops, I can still see it getting absolutely smashed if your delivery guy decides to heat it over the garden gate. The dryer is nice and sleek with a brushed metal finish and everything looks to be of a good quality. The top lid has ventilation holes in the middle, 6 filament exits on top and 2 on each side of the spool. The machine is fairly quiet and when you turn it off the fans of the PTC element keep on spinning, just for a few seconds to cool it down. The NT1 has a built-in PTC heater with a temperature range from 20 to 70 degrees Celsius. There are no filament type presets, so you will have to set the temperature every time you plug it in. However, you will never have to. More on that later. The screen is nice and simple, with in the top left corner the temperature, the right top corner shows the moisture level and on the bottom you can see the active time in hours and minutes. The screen however seems to be blinking every 2 seconds, which gets a bit annoying if you are in a dark space. After reaching out to FixRai and watching some other reviews, they explained to me that they are working on a fix in later models, so right now it's a feature, not a bug. There are 4 buttons, the on and off button, the scroll menu button which switches between the timer and temperature, and then a plus and minus button to adjust the temperature or timer. Inside we can find 4 plastic rollers which houses some bearings and a heat shield. The rollers rotate nice and smooth and printing with cardboard spools is not a problem. The PTC heater is in the middle of the housing blowing straight on both spools. According to the manual the heat shield should be used only if you are drying filaments without using it. You can remove them when you are actively printing. Now. I would be very careful with this as the heat that comes out of the PTC heater goes well over 70 degrees and can potentially ruin your entire spool. Removing the top lid needs a bit of practice, it's a tight fit but after a while you will get the hang of it. What I don't like about this is when you want to replace your spool you need to remove the top lid with all the PTFV tubing hanging onto it, making it a bit awkward and potentially screwing up your active print on the other spool. It would be a lot better if the top can hinge up leaving the PTFE tubes in its place so the other spool can continue without issues, but still giving you enough options on the lid so you can place tubes wherever you want. Ok so we talked about the machine and what it can do, but why do you need to dry your filament? Almost all filaments are hygroscopic, which means they all absorb moisture from the air making the filament what is more commonly known as wet. Because I have a permanent dryer box, I need to make some filament wet and fast. Because what is a wet filament? Well, look at the solution. This stuff has been soaking for probably, I think it's going to be right around three weeks now. So this is ABS Plus from Isan. And then we have another filament from Isan and this is the carbon filled nylon. Carbon filled products tend to be more hygroscopic than other filaments. So this is going to be very wet. This is going to be <laughs> unusable to print. So we are going to try and dry it in this fix dry. <laughs> Both of these filaments are very happy to take on moisture. And instead of telling you what it looks like, here are some examples. When the wet filament enters the hot nozzle, the water turns into steam pushing the filament uncontrollably out of the nozzle, giving you a very bad looking outer wall. Not only that, the filament is full of voids from the moisture evaporating, making the filament very weak and easy to break. Now to get rid of it, you need heat. While most people like to put a number on a type of filament, in my opinion, it doesn't matter like at all. Well, it still matters. I have my homemade dryer box permanently at 40 degrees Celsius. And I filled the bottom of my enclosure with color changing desiccants. None of my filament in the box is wet, not even my high temp nylons, so why does temperature matter? First of all, the hotter you can set the dryer, the faster it will dry. 
I have set the dryer to 40 degrees and put in the two wet spools of ABS and carbon fiber nylon. The ABS was dry in a few hours. The nylon took a couple of days, but eventually it dried out to a perfect usable filament. Now I want to try the higher temperatures on the NT1. And at this point stuff got, uh, let's say, very weird. In the beginning I told you that the printer has a temperature range between 20 and 70 degrees. While in reality it's more between 20 and 50. And uh, guys, I'm being generous. In the manual we can see that all the testing is done at 25C, while in my shop it's temperature controlled to 20C. The cool thing about temperature deltas is that they are linear, so in my shop it should reach 65 degrees. But it didn't. To make things even worse, this little box tricks you into believing that it's actually 65C, while in reality it's more like uh, 45C. So I reached out again for an explanation and they said the following. The actual temperature we display is located at the PTC heating outlet. Since the sensor is relatively far away from the PTC, an algorithm is used to solve the temperature difference between the actual detection value of the sensor and the PTC air outlets. When not set, the actual temperature value is displayed, so there will be differences. Ok then, let's test it. When placing my probe next to the probe of the machine, the values match almost exactly until you start to set above 45C. Once you go above 50C, the actual temperature doesn't match the screen anymore, so let's set it to 70C. And here we can see that the temperature on the screen jumped with almost 15C. If you look back at their explanation and analyze it, then I feel they are doing some magic with the PTC heater. First of all, let's look at the power consumption. When you first turn on the machine, the PTC pulls 150 watts plus of power and steadily drops down to 85 watts. Or lower, depending on the temperature. When we set the temperature to 7 degrees, well, nothing changes. We still see the same 80 watt. But the display makes you believe the machine is pushing 65C and above, while my probe is still in the 40s. So it looks like the machine is not capable of reaching these temperatures, so they decided to adjust them a little bit to make you feel better of your purchase. So here is my advice fix dry, just don't. This is a great little machine that looks to be of a great build quality, so why would you ruin it with lies? Now some more on the PTC element. This is a very cool, pun not attended, piece of technology that is very efficient in heating up and still being very safe. Basically, it's a self-regulating heater element that starts to increase resistance when it's getting hot and lowers the power consumption until it reaches a steady state. In this case, it's around 85 watts. Now, this can be influenced in a few ways. First of all, the manufacturer can design the element in that way that they can basically adjust the power curve to their liking. Another way is airflow or temperature, which we can demonstrate here. Luckily, right now in Belgium it's very cold. It's about 0 degrees outside. So I have put the dryer outside, I have removed everything, put it in some smart plug so we can measure the power outlet and lo and behold the wattage seems to be a lot higher than we do it inside with everything mounted. So in this case you can clearly see that the colder or the more airflow is going to the PTC heater, the more power it will pull. Now if we put everything on it and we put on the heat shield, we put some filament spools in it and we do the testing again, we are back to the low 80s. So this PTC heater is definitely reacting to temperatures and airflow. Now to see how this system works we have to open it up. When we open it up the electronics are very basic. We have a control board, a small power supply for the fan and controller and a PTC heater with a fan. Looking closer we can see a relay that cuts the power from the PTC heater which we can clearly hear when the system reaches the desired temperature. Now let's test the claim about their algorithm. When we put the temperature around 40C or lower, the probe seems to work one to one with what it reads. Looking closer we can see that the probe is actually rated to be only at maximum of 60C. In my experience, most probes can go well over its rating, but accuracy will start to plummet. So let's take a hairdryer. We can see that the probe is fully able to read well over 70C, so the trickery is not because of a not to spec probe. Now I think we can get a clear conclusion. The FixRye NT1 is a great looking filament dryer that reaches temperatures up to 50C. We rented a bit on the trickery, but still I think the machine is a great addition to the shop. Especially if you are looking for dual spool filament dryers. Now, is it somewhat competitive is not a question. Right now the pricing is about 82 euros. 
it seems to be that there is a lot of competition for the dual spool dryers. For instance, you have the Zoval dual spool for 66 euro, and then you get at the more expensive dryers like the Sunlu S4, which houses four spools for 121 euros, which is probably also a bit higher quality. Or even better, do it like me and build your own dryer box. It's going to be cheaper and bigger depending on the materials that you use. In my opinion, you are better off buying single spool machines, as they almost cost the same as a dual dryer. Of course, I have not tested these dryers, so take this opinion with a bag of salt. This was a very interesting video to make. We uncovered some hidden secrets in this machine. Sound off down below if you take offense of these uh, hidden features, let's call it like that. And uh, let me know what you think about the new editing style. We have printed a few of these awesome little looking tower dice uh, thingies that are going to be smoothed and the poly smoothed. This is going to be smoothed in the polisher from Polysmooth itself. And this is going to be smoothed in my uh, let's call it the Giga Smoother. We also have the review coming up from the Saturn Ultra 3 where you are going to be able to download these files and print them for yourself. This is a very cool object to print and I think you will really enjoy it. Make sure to be subscribed to the channel because we have a lot of cool stuff coming up this year and I hope to see you in the next one.